Hey, True Believers England team here. So, Justice League, Endless Winter. Um, I, I figured, okay, let's put this in the Christmas cavalcade thing. It could easily be a new comic book review as well. Uh, so it might be on that playlist. But I, I figure, okay, this if this is what they're going to do for the winter, let's check it out. All right. Yeah, that's about as much as I could say about this book. I, I'm like, I read it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a nothing burger. Um, there's entertaining moments. I like the opening. I really did. And in fact, I would rather, um, I would rather follow the secret six here, tell you the truth, the, uh, with the Catman and everything than the justice league at this point. But you do have the, uh, the secret six, the, uh, they took over an Island uh, nation. And then of course the justice league come in and bust them up. And my only thought really was that, um, okay, what's this all about now? If the secret six here, I, I'm just calling them that because they don't have a name. Uh, if they come back, maybe this will have something to do with anything, but otherwise it's just an action scene to establish characters, which is stupid because it's the Justice League. If you're a DC fan, which is probably why you would buy this, you already know who everybody is, therefore they could just spend time on the story. Now, this doesn't really hold any anything if in the next issue they bring back these characters and there's a reason uh, for them to be here. Otherwise, it's just a, a waste of space. It really is. Uh, who is this? It's Lanning and Mars writing this. And uh, it really feels that way. It does feel like it's two different writers. It feels uh, uneven a little bit. And I'm not trying to knock it too hard. It's not a bad book. It really isn't. It, it just is a very average book. So they uh, end up going to the South Pole or North Pole. Wherever, and they go to the area that Superman's Fortress of Solitude used to be. Uh, we have somebody digging up crystals that were left behind there. And they get there and this big frost giant king comes out and causes all sorts of higgledy-piggledy and, and a big old fight. And we see that uh, he gets released into the wild. Basically, that's it. And uh, that this is set up to go and cross over into the Flash. Okay, I guess this is their big winter crossover, I think, which makes a little sense because they do focus on the Flash running from place to place going, hey, how do you balance out? And Or with, with the other superheroes, Black Lightning right here, how do you balance family and superheroism? Well, you know, it takes work. Everybody's basically saying that, and he's still asking everybody as if, you know, there's some easy out because I guess that's the modern day version of superhero so long as they can find an easy way out why try the hard way right we do get an interesting spot where flash is talking to superman and he mentions um how superman looks like he's got it all done and superman just lays out all the bad stuff that uh brian michael bendis has been doing to superman about how oh and, and which makes me think flash why do you even think that superman knows how to handle his family he let his son go into the future. He let his son go into a spaceship with his father and come back a freaking teenager. Yeah, that all the bad stuff that Bendis has done, the worst of it is he made Superman a bad father, in all honesty, and Lois Lane a bad mother, which was uh, flying in the face of all the greatness that Tomasi did. This is the Frost King. Uh, I looked at him and went, Lobo grew horns and can control ice? That's That was my thought to it. And he does see everybody as kind of uh, medieval, and we learn that uh, a long, long time ago that Black Adam actually fought him, and there's a bit where you see in the past that they, uh, they, they did that, that it was Hippolyta and Black Adam and a whole bunch of people that went after the Frost King. Like I said, they're, they're gearing up for this to be a big deal. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't exactly scream, hey, you got to read the next issue. It's continued in The Flash, a book that I get anyway and I would read anyway. So I'll find out what's next, but I'm not compelled to pick up any side issues if this turns out to be one of those things. I'm good with just the main story. Uh, this right here, can I recommend it? No, unless you find it like in one of those grab bags or if you find it as a discount, sure, fine. Um, I'm not saying that you're going to think it's horrible. Hey, you know what? This might be a bias by someone who's read so many comics and so many, um, so many events and everything that I no longer find a lot of excitement in them. Therefore, if you are a newer collect a collector, 
you may actually think, hey, man, this is really cool. And, you know, you'll find something to love that I didn't because, you know, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell if you haven't done it already. Uh, if you'd like to help out the channel, by all means, please go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps make more videos for you. Helps keep the lights on. This is the way I'm trying to make a living. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. To everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.